You're with GBC's Viewpoint. A few weeks ago, we sat down with the Gibraltar pro-life movement and some of its international supporters, and tonight we're doing likewise with Gibraltar for Yes. Professor Fiona DeLondres works in Birmingham Law School, where she's chair of Global Legal Studies. Her research covers constitutionalism and human rights, and she's particularly interested in contentious policy fields like abortion. Gibraltar for Yes arranged for her to speak to Viewpoint from Birmingham. Yeah, so my work is effectively on what difference, if any, human rights makes when governments are trying to develop policy in complex or difficult policy areas. Um, and one of the fields that I've been working in in that context is abortion regulation, uh, which is a complex field um, for some people ethically, although not necessarily clinically, but crafting laws that will um, satisfy the majority of people in a complex ethical field is, of course, a challenging endeavour. And so I was involved uh, in working around the Irish abortion referendum, uh, particularly in trying to translate complex legal arguments or complex representations of legal arguments. And so when I saw that um, campaigners in Gibraltar were engaged in trying uh, to bring about a change in the law there, where women were experiencing many of the same dynamics and challenges that women in Ireland had experienced, and particularly reliance on abortion travel uh, in order to access abortion care. I think, I, if I remember correctly, I reached out um, and asked if there was anything that we could do uh, to help them in a similar process uh, with my colleague Maureen Enright here in Birmingham Law School, I responded to the government consultation on a proposed new law uh, and I have been trying uh, in as much as I was needed to also assist with that process of translation from the technical provisions in the Crimes Amendment Act to comprehensible articulations of the proposed changes. And I think that is really the critical role that expert scholars can play here is to simply explain what the proposals are, place them in a human rights and a clinical context and empower people to make decisions separated maybe from some of the noise of argument um, and just presented neutrally so that people can come to their own conclusions. You fed into the Gibraltar government's consultation process ahead of the publication by them of this new law, which Gibraltar is now going to vote on. What are your headline thoughts on that legislation? So the first thing to say is that, of course, the law as proposed, and this is the law that people will vote on, so there wouldn't be a change to this law uh, if people voted yes. Uh, is, of course, a significant um, improvement in terms of healthcare provision and women's capacity to exercise reproductive agency compared to what went before it. And in that respect, it's very welcome. However, there are uh, ways in which the new law does not really uh, reflect the evidence from uh, very significant clinical studies, for example, into the best way to provide abortion care. So things like having this 12-week limit, which is extremely short. We have this in Ireland now as well for the most permissive ground uh, of access to abortion. That can raise some challenges. 12 weeks can be a very short period of time um, because, of course, it's not unusual for people to not realize that they're pregnant until they're quite far into um, that 12 week period, especially since once the 12 week period has passed, the grounds for access to lawful abortion in Gibraltar are extremely strenuous. You know, they will be difficult to satisfy. So a risk to life greater than if the pregnancy were terminated, a risk of grave permanent injury to health or um, a risk of so-called fatal fetal abnormality, which is probably better described 
as the diagnosis of a fatal condition for the fetus. So, you know, after 12 weeks, which is a short period of time, people would only be accessing lawful abortion in Gibraltar in really grave circumstances, which of course suggests that there will still be some reliance on abortion travel and some significant unmet abortion need, even if this law is introduced. Two questions spring to mind, having spoken to the Gibraltar pro-life movement. Firstly, they say that in the UK, uh, 96% of abortions are currently accessed on the basis that they pose a risk of permanent serious damage to a woman's physical or mental health. And they think that the Gibraltar legislation as drafted is sufficiently vague to allow for abuse. GPs deal with mental health conditions every single day of the week. Uh, and it is, of course, the case that in administering this law, medical practitioners will also be administering medical best practice. So that if, if somebody presents with a complex medical condition, including a mental health condition, with which they're not familiar, the ordinary course of events would be to engage with more expert colleagues. So normal medical practice still applies. The second point, which is of critical importance, is to say that mental health is health. Uh, it is really important to excavate what lies beneath this claim sometimes, which is to suggest that somehow mental health is not as serious as physical health. Uh, of course, mental health and physical health are both health. The other question that springs to mind, having heard from the Gibraltar pro-life movement, is that they think that a baby deserves legal protection from conception. When do you think human life deserves legal protection? So I think that um, fetal life has a very significant ethical value. Um, and I think that it is protected through both the ethics and behavior of the person who is pregnant, through best medical practice, and sometimes indeed through law. The question that arises is what is the most appropriate way to express our general societal commitment to the ethical value of fetal life um, and to recognize that while fetal life does have value, a fetus is not ethically or legally the same as a person who is alive uh, and who often, of course, also has other relationships of care and responsibility. Remember, the a large proportion of people who access abortion care already have children and are often making that decision in order to ensure that they can better um, provide for and care for the children that they um, have in their lives already. So I'm not giving you a straight answer to your question because there isn't a simple right answer to that question. The way I would think about it is this. At what point would it be right for the law to remove from people who are pregnant their right to exercise their ethic, ethical and moral judgment about what is right for them, for their other children, and in terms of the pregnancy in question. Now, what the law that people are voting on does is it places the limit of that right at 12 weeks. OK, but you do agree that there does need to be some sort of limit in place, even though it is a bit of a moot point, given that there is a specific piece of legislation in Gibraltar. Exactly. It is entirely moot. People, there is no question here about what people are voting on. The law has been passed by Parliament. And if people vote yes, that law and no other law will be introduced within 28 days of the referendum. So bigger questions about... Should there ever be a term limit? Is the law right? Should the term limit be longer? These are moot questions in this referendum. The only question in this referendum is, do you want this law to be enacted or not? And the law puts the limit. Well, first of all, it always requires the medical and legal test, and it always requires two certificates of two medical practitioners. And then it puts the limit at 12 weeks. And after 12 weeks, 
people will only be able to make a decision of that kind either A, if they travel abroad for abortion, B, if they commit a criminal offence by importing safe medical abortion pills and using them in Gibraltar, or C, if they fall into one of the very narrow categories where abortion will be lawful on medical grounds after 12 weeks. So broader questions about whether abortion is right or wrong, uh, on which people will disagree, about whether there should ever be a term limit on which people will disagree. Those questions are actually not what people are being asked to vote on. You know, there's a very, that's different to what we had in Ireland where there was a, a proposal for a law, but it wasn't the law. There was still room for movement. This is, you know, there's a, the voters of Gibraltar have a very, very solid piece of ground to stand on here, a rock, if you want. And that is the law that the parliament has passed. That's all that's on the table. And finally, Professor Delondres, uh, some easy to understand concluding thoughts. So my perspective is, first of all, that the government has presented a very clear set of propositions to people. And that is that pregnancy would basically be divided into two periods of time. Up to 12 weeks, a pregnant person could access abortion uh, certified by two doctors in almost all cases. After 12 weeks, abortion would be available in Gibraltar only in four very limited circumstances. The first is an emergency, where it is immediately necessary to prevent damage to life or permanent grave damage to health. The second is where there's a risk to life. The third is where there's a risk of grave and permanent injury to health. And the fourth is where the fetus has a fatal diagnosis. That's what's on the table and nothing else. And so I think what the voters of Gibraltar might want to think about, as we ask voters in Ireland to think about, is whether or not if somebody close to them, someone they loved, or indeed themselves, were in a position where for whatever reason they felt like they were not sure they could continue with the pregnancy, whether they think the law should give them a range of choices, albeit in a very circumscribed way, or whether they think the law should simply say, if you want to exercise any other choice, you need to leave this country and exercise it elsewhere. That's what's on the table for people. And ultimately, I think most voters, when we ask ourselves what we think the law should stop other people from doing, when we know that life is complicated and that people make hard decisions every day and that reproductive life is messy and challenging and that family life is messy and challenging. I think when we put ourselves in that position, um, people will have an opportunity uh, in March to really ask themselves whether you would say no to someone who needed that help from the law and needed that medical care at home in Gibraltar. Uh, and that's, I think, the way to ask yourself that question. And then whatever answer people come to, that's their own answer. And that's perfectly valid, whether one votes yes or no. Professor Fiona DeLondres, an academic at Birmingham Law School, who took part in the Gibraltar government's consultation process on abortion and is talking to Gibraltar for Yes.